Scientists say this species is on the brink of extinction, and it is all our fault. Nobody is uh, free of blame in this game. That is Kate Wilson. She is an investigative journalist who recently exposed what she says is a $4 billion black market trade in the sale of bluefin tuna. Scientists tell us that when a top predator like bluefin or another big fish is depleted, that will affect the entire ecosystem. Scientists say that, you know, you better get used to eating jellyfish sashimi and algae burgers if you let these large fish be depleted because they really do anchor the ecosystem. Ecosystems are how living things interact with their environments and each other. Scientists agree they can change dramatically if a link disappears from the food chain. Government officials and members of environmental groups met in Paris in mid-November to discuss fishing regulations that may affect all life on Earth. Sue Lieberman is director of international policy with the Pew Environment Group, a Washington-based nonprofit agency. She says the bluefin is in jeopardy. The fish is in worse shape than we thought, and we, that's why we're calling for the meeting of this commission to suspend this fishery, to put on the brakes and say, let's stop. Let's stop mismanaging and start managing the right way to ensure a future for this species. Both Lieberman and Wilson say that greed, corruption, and poor management of fishing quotas brought us to this point. There are quotas, and those quotas are designed to allow the fish to recover, but the quotas in the past were even more than scientists recommend. But even within those quotas, there's consistent lack of enforcement, fraud, fish being traded without any documents, etc., to the point that it is a multi-million, multi-billion dollar business that is causing the depletion, which will lead to extinction, of an incredible species. Wilson says that fishing the bluefin to near extinction followed increased Japanese demand for fresh sushi starting in the 1970s and 80s and fishing practices that target the two primary regions in which bluefin spawn, the Gulf of Mexico and the Mediterranean Sea. You don't need a PhD in fisheries to know that's really not very smart. If you want the species to continue into the future, you don't take them when they come to breed. And that practice shines light on a bigger problem. 90% of all large fish, um, it's estimated, have been depleted. So bluefin is really just a bellwether for what's happening to what's left of the world's large fish. We're not saying there should be no fishing, but we're saying there should be no fishing like that. This isn't single individuals out there with a, with a pole and a line. This isn't recreational fishermen. This is massive industrial scale fishing. But governments can change this. This isn't something, one of those environmental threats that we throw up our hands and say there's nothing we can do about. If countries really want to you know, protect the remaining stocks of bluefin, they have to get serious about, you know, enforcing the rules and listening to their scientists when they set catch limits. Management of, of fish species on the high seas isn't just about making sure people have nice seafood when they go to a restaurant. It's about the very future of our planet. And we have to get management of the oceans correct. And we can't keep, and governments can't keep acting as if We'll, we'll take care of that next year. Right now, we'll, we'll worry about making money in the short term. We'll listen to the fishing industry, but we'll worry about the ocean environment later. We don't have that luxury. The chief counselor's office for the Fisheries Agency of Japan did not return VOA's request for an interview. And while international delegates recently voted to adopt new legislation limiting the fishing of some kinds of sharks, they voted to lower the fishing quotas for bluefin tuna by only 4%. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News, Washington.